Hi, in this video I'll be covering how to create a dynamic calendar. Maybe you're putting together a dashboard you want to have a one month view for your audience. Also, you may want to give them the option of entering some date and the calendar dynamically shows you that month. Or, if they're on a party and you want to know when to plan it. You just like to have dates show up in a grid format just like how you see in a printed calendar with the days of the week and what date falls on one of the most important days of the week, either a Friday or a Saturday. I'll show you how to create that dynamic calendar you always wanted. Also, you may also want to foolproof it by making sure whatever gets entered in that input cell is a date and not some text. I'll show you how to do that with data validation function near the end of the video. So let's get started. Basically, we have a calendar like this, something where we can put on a dashboard or some kind of website, and we can create our own calendar here. So this is set for 1-1-2020. If we wanted to set this for 1-1-1999, I can do 1-1-1999. You can see that. And then we have January 1999 here. January the 1st starts on the correct day of the week, Friday, and it ends on Sunday. So this is going to be created using one of the newer functions in Excel, the sequence function, along with other functions. And we can foolproof this because we don't want people to enter in some funky information here. We want them to enter in a date, right? So we want them to enter in a date. And I'll show you how to do that data validation closer to the end of the video. Let's get started. Here we have a blank cell, so let's start with a date. I'll try this date, we'll do 1-1-2020, and we can just start off creating the basic structure for our calendar. And we'll vote Sunday, Monday, and Excel is gonna be pretty smart enough if I make Sunday and Monday here, drag the fill handle, it's gonna make Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So we have those days of the weeks on the top, and at the bottom, we're gonna have, let's do six rows here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then of course our seven columns, give it a border and let's give that a border so we can see what is happening. So earlier we had it where January 1st, it starts on a Wednesday, but how did we figure that out? Because we want to know where we put in a date and it will just automatically dynamically put where the first starts. So when does uh, January 1st start on? What day of the week? So in the calendar that we set up here, Sunday is the first day of the week, Monday the second, Tuesday the third, and etc. So what day does January 1st, 2020 start off? So let's figure that out. There actually is a function called weekday. And if I plug that in here, press enter, it tells you that January 1st, 2020 is on the fourth day of the week. So that Wednesday. But we don't want to manually put this in. We don't want to put 1-1-2020 one, one, in there. We want to have this be dynamic. So how do we figure that out? And so that comes with the sequence function. So that's what we're going to do here because we want to start off at the first cell here and have it figure that out for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in sequence function. And what the sequence function does, it just gives you a sequence of numbers based on how many rows, how many columns, what do you want it to start at? And this last argument, this step, what you want to increment it by. So we have six rows here. So I'm going to put six. And how many columns do we have? Well, there's going to be seven days in the week, so we have seven columns. And what is our start? Well, this is the key here. Our start is going to be this number here. And you may think, why would I put a date as a start date? Well, dates in Excel show up as numbers. Let me show you what that means. Put a space here so that that, that command doesn't execute. So if I look at this number and I change it, I made it general instead of a date, you would notice that it is a number. So that's just, this is how Excel sees dates. It sees it as a number. And basically that number is the 43,831 days after this date in Excel. So if I put a number one here, that date in Excel where it all starts, if I put that as a date, that date would be January 1st, 1900, right? So that's how Excel sees dates. Everything increments from that particular date. So let's get rid of that. And so that's a little history lesson for that. So I'm gonna turn this back into a date here and we're gonna change that later too. But this is how it works. So I'm gonna say, based on that C5 date, let me delete that space here. I want to minus off the days, right? I wanna minus off, I wanna start that off at one. So if Wednesday is the number four here, I wanna have that date, that number minus four. So that 43,000 number minus four, brings me over here to Sunday. But if I minus that, it's gonna include that number, so it's gonna to go to zero here. 
So how do we get that? Well, we got to figure out that four number, right? That, that, that function I did earlier. So how do we figure out that number? We, we have to get that four, right? So that four was that function, right? Weekday. And then I did the weekday of that, of that date. So we're going to bring C5 back here, right? But if, it, if it, I do the weekday of the C5, it's going to bring it to zero. It's going to go all the way over here, right? So I wanted to add one to it. So that's where I want to start it at. I want to start it over here in this cell. This is what this is what this set of functions does. Comma, now my step. Well, I want to increment it by one. Okay? Every day is going to increment by one day. Close parentheses, press enter, and now I have all these funky numbers. Well, again, these are the serial numbers of those dates. So if I take all this and I go and change it to date, now you're going to see the magic happen. So January 1st, 2020 starts on Wednesday. All right, but I don't want to see anything in December. I don't want to see anything in February here. So what I can do is I can change that function. I, I, I can say if open parentheses, and I want to see this if this function executes, if it's in the same month as this month here, then execute this function. If not, give me a blank. So we can do that by saying month open parentheses if that if the execution of that function equals the month, open parentheses, of this cell, C5, close parentheses, then execute this function. So I'm just going to copy this. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, go into this value of true, Control V to paste, execute that function, comma. Now this is highlighted. If it's false, double quotes, double quotes, basically blank close parentheses, press enter, and now those blanks are there for December and for February. So now I have all my dates for the month of January here. But also I don't want to see uh, month, day, and year here. So I'm going to take this, select all of this, and change the formatting. I can just right click and go to format cells. It brings up my format cells menu here, and I want to do a custom, right? And the custom function I want to do, you can see this it right now set up for MDYY, month, date, year. All I want to do is press D, and that just gives me the day. Click OK, and that is just the day, right? One, two, three, four. And I am pretty much set there. And maybe I want to do the same here. I don't want to see that big old date there. I can right click it and bring up that menu, or I can press Control 1. It brings up the same menu. And here, I'll do custom function. And here, I just want to see the month and year. So type in M. You can see that's the first month because that's January. Type in another M, you'll see a zero one. Type in a third M, you see the January as abbreviated. I want to have the whole thing out, so I'm going to type in another M. So it gives me January space. Then Y, which then gives me the shortcut for 2020, just the year 2020. But I'm gonna, I want to see the full year, so Y, 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 Y. I think three Ys would have done it, but, but let's do four Ys just to be a little bit more consistent here. Click OK. And we've got January 2020, but even though it says January 2020, that's just the display. We have our 1-1 2020 here. Bring it out here. I want to have it fill up the whole gap here. Control-1, bring up that formatting cell. Go under alignment. And let's have it horizontal. And have it center across selection. Click OK. So now it's centered across the selection. Let's give the rest of the cells some formatting. Click that. And make, it, make that a nice little blue color. Delete that. We don't need that anymore. Select my columns. Let's make it a little bit smaller here. And voila, we have our cells here. But we don't want to keep changing this. Let's say I change this to February 2 2 2020. Press enter. I don't want to change in there because that's kind of a hidden cell there. Let's say I create something up here. Now put enter date. And we can enter a date outside of our calendar so we don't mess it up there. So I'll put 1 1 2020. And here, I'll just reference that A2 cell equals A2. Press enter. And you can see it aired out. And we don't want that to happen, right? So as I mentioned before, we can make it where we dummy proof this. So let's make this 2020 again. You can see it changes back. And if I made this, maybe I'll make this December. It changes to December. But let's change this to make it dummy proof. So we don't have it where we mess it up if we enter in text or some other weird numbers. Go under data and then data validation. Click data validation. Allow only date, anything that is greater than one, right? And so it's 
remember we had dates as serial numbers, so it's going to start off as one, that one one nineteen hundred date. Click OK, and now if I try to enter in text, I'm going to get an error. Cancel. Now if I enter back my date one dash one dash twenty twenty, press enter, I get my date and my calendar is dynamic. As you can see, there's some neat things you can do with the sequence function, which is a dynamic array function available in Microsoft 365. I think it's also available in Excel 2021, but check the web to make sure. If you're into adding something that could wow your audience or your boss, or you just like to make cool things in Excel, try creating this dynamic calendar on your own. To see more Excel videos like this, click the banner at the end.